Welcome back to the Express in False Creek. The 6th Annual Women in Film Festival was held last weekend and it kicked off with a full day of discussions on digital media and how it's shaping our independent film scene. The Van City Theatre hosted the 6th Annual Vancouver Women in Film Festival and day one was all about the Digital Media Forum. How many of you have a Twitter account that you use actively? It's an all-day affair. We have four different panels, 12 different speakers, four different moderators, women who are working and successful in that area. This particular forum discussion was all about social media and independent film. This is a marketing strategy that has been around for less than 10 years. Facebook's only been around for seven years. I really feel like social media is breaking down barriers for filmmakers. In the past, there was sort of this very specific path that you had to take if you were a filmmaker to get your film out into the world. And now it just seems like all those barriers are gone. If you can, you know, get out there and get your own Facebook page and get a Twitter account and get a YouTube account, it is amazing how much of an audience you can create for your film. So say we have a blog post. I'll push out the blog post on Facebook and Twitter. I'll do it at different times. I'll have different messaging for the post. It's not going to cost you money to make a Twitter account. It's not going to cost you money to make a Facebook account. It's really about your strategy that you need to form. Content is king. People are not going to engage with you unless you have interesting content. So everything comes into play. You want to have you know, daily content, whether it be a blog post, a video, even just a picture, even just a question. You want to have content for people to engage with. Before we had any publicity or any you know, actual you know, reviews of the film, Ava was blogging about the movie. Social media just basically means that you, uh, as a filmmaker, are going to have an incredible opportunity for your film to get seen because you can connect people to your movie uh, around the world through, through website and social media and through the internet. It will be the greatest zoological find in the history of marine biology. Rebecca says social media was key to the success of a film she worked on called The Beast of Bottomless Lake. We are on the cusp of a new era. We were asked to be the gala opening film at the Okanagan International Film Festival. And they said to us, we've never sold out a film at this film festival before, ever. And so we got onto social media and we sold out the film. And in addition to that, they actually had to add an extra screening because there were so many people that were clamoring to see the film. Pogo Pogo is for sale. Get your Pogo before they go go. In Vancouver, I'm Kendall Harris for The Express. You can go to womeninfilm.ca to find out how you can get involved in next year's film festival. Now right now on the Express we're going to amp up the action. We've got a late night snowshoe tour, we've got a party time at Fat Teddy's and some epic turns at a Vancouver Island gym. Welcome to the Snow Show brought to you by Snow Seekers with your host Doc Powell. Live like a local these next few minutes and get inspired to why you should choose this destination for your next winter adventure. Step into the snow and make the call on what's best for you. Each week, Doc Powell discovers these destinations with the help of some friends. Let's meet this week's guide. Gordon Ross is a pro photographer who's traveled the world but calls Mount Washington home. This snow seeker skis, snowboards, and telemarks on one of the world's only island-bound ski destinations. I don't know what it is about islands, but they have a way of creating their own little microculture. And we've got some amazing runs right from like, you know, beginner, intermediate, but then if you want some serious black diamond and double black diamond stuff, then we've got this area called the Outback. All day long you can find new fresh powder. I mean, we have this massive snowpack here. I think this year we're already at like five meters mid-mountain which, you know, breaks records peak after peak. I mean, the Pacific Ocean, the big Pacific Ocean, isn't that far away. Check it out for yourself and see, because that's really, uh, at the end of the day, what convinces most people, is they have to see it, and then once they do, they're convinced. And then they come, and then they're hooked, and then they'll be back year after year. The uh, experience tonight is kind of just give us a walkthrough of what's going on, what we're up to. Well, we started at the Raven Lodge, amazing building just right on the side of Mount Washington and then we did a little trek through the forest here where the snow was coming down out of the trees. It's pretty epic when you get to call this your backyard man. Yeah, Especially because totally. you get this call this your office as yeah. a shooter too. Yeah. And some of these opportunities that you get back in these woods, like they're off the charts. Amazing. You know, I've been fortunate to travel a lot as, as a photographer 
and uh, I always just keep coming back to this place because of this. I mean, this is the main reason that I moved here. And also this the fact of getting in the solitude that's living in this space, oh, like in amazing. and around, whether it's on the hill or whether it's an experience like this, just that silence. Totally, yeah, whatever you want to do, whether it's, uh, you know, snowshoeing or cross-country skiing, telemarking, snowboarding, you know, you can easily get your own little private piece of nature somewhere. Mount Washington offers a signature experience that not only includes a stellar snowshoe through BC's old growth forest, but also comes with an epic dinner. Well, we came up here from Nanaimo. It's our 40th anniversary and our children gave us this adventure. And we're presently uh, enjoying the fondue, which is, um, we're at the dessert level of, of fondue, enjoying uh, pineapple, pear, banana, and banana bread dipped in chocolate. The resort boasts a ton of on-mountain options including accommodations, dining, and nightlife. Step into Fat Teddy's for a great night out. What I did know about this place is that you have all the amenities of an amazing island. So you've got all the surfing, the hiking, the fishing, the camping, and then you've got a ski hill in the middle of all of it in the winter. It kind of ticked every box for me. I felt I could get everything I wanted from Canada on the island. So that's why I came to Mount Washington. And has it met your expectations? <laughs> Just totally surpassed it. And what about the vibe when you get into a place like Teddy's at night? It's amazing. Like, I'm really fortunate to work somewhere like this because the people are amazing, the vibe is awesome, everybody's on holiday, all the staff want to be here because they're passionate about the sport. So yeah, it's a fabulous place to work. Who wouldn't want to be here? There aren't many ski resorts on the planet that you can get to by boat. Sail across the Pacific with a voyage on BC ferries to get you into the goods that await at Mount Washington Alpine Resort. Thank you for checking out the snow show. For more on this destination and dozens more, check us out online at snowseekers.ca. Chances to win lift tickets, getaways, and lots of deals on your next winter vacation can be found at snowseekers.ca. With a current snow base that just passed the 5 meter mark, Mount Washington expects April to be another memorable month for spring skiing. You're watching The Express and we're going to take you on stage and back in time. Up next. Now art thou After sociable. the break. Now art thou Romeo. Earl Marriott's secondaries, Romeo and Juliet. For this driveling love is like a great natural that He used a shaving mug. The Burnaby Village Museum's Tommy Irvine House. A special soap on the top. The Express. This is your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by Hairstyling and color services for Shaw TV provided by The Lounge Hair Studio loungehairstudio.com Dear Children's Wish Foundation of Canada Thank you for sending me Rory the Lion That means I'm going to get my wish and that makes me really, really happy Yesterday he was sad, but I told him it's okay, Rory, but only two more needles until my wish. I will send you pictures from the top of the Rocky Mountains. Love, Emily. Imagine the difference a wish can make. Click on childrenswish.ca and give today. Welcome back to the Express in False Creek. Today our youth produce segment, Gen Y, is asking, wherefore art thou color? They've got Earl Marriott's secondaries, Romeo and Juliet, with a twist. He is the courageous captain of compliments. Two households, both alike in dignity and fair Verona. Yes, today we bring you the epic Romeo and Juliet, the original story of feuding families and star-crossed lovers. And yet, I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep. I'm Juliet, who's very young and quite naive, and I don't know. I, I think that she, she she's quite romantic. You know, she, she believes in love, even though she hasn't quite found it yet. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. My character's Romeo. He um, usually uh, wants what he can't have, because uh, in the beginning he's shooting for the woman that won't uh, reciprocate his love, I guess. And uh, he knows that, but he still wants her. The actors especially enjoyed the memorable balcony scene shared between Romeo and Juliet. Speak again, bright angel. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? 
Yeah, it's that scene that everyone knows that they relate to when they think of Romeo and Juliet. Um, so, a lot of pressure because people are expecting something like incredible out of it. It's hard to play sometimes some of the lines because they're so iconic and it's hard not to fall into the, to the rhythm of what the cliches of what you've seen everyone else do. How now? To transform from modern day high school life to the characters in Shakespearean time, the actors were given special exercises. You bow in the hands. <laughs> we definitely spend a lot of time in rehearsal where we take segments, lines, words, and we put them into our own modern speak because it's so essential that, that they be able to tell me at any given moment what their character is saying today. Now art thou what thou art, by art as well as by nature. It was very difficult because some of the phrasing is so, so different, so vastly different from modern language. The hardest part was understanding what you're saying mm -hmm. for some parts, because there's some parts where there's words that you've never heard before, or they're used in contexts that you haven't, you've never seen. You get confused as to how to um, space them out, how to use beats, how to get the real rhythm of it, and how to make it real, so you bring in other factors like bringing it into your body and expressing it through your hands and your and your feet and your your face and just <laughs> taking other parts of it other than just the words. I don't know, you just Although the play was written hundreds of years ago, the themes of Romeo and Juliet are still relevant today. It's about passionate teenagers at, at the core of it and how um, strongly they feel love. Guy wants a girl, there's complications, they end up together. Plot twist, they die. But um, I'm sure... Usually there's the happy ending in there. I'm sure almost yeah. everything nowadays is influenced some way by Shakespeare. Yeah, I think everybody can find something in the story that talks to them, that speaks to them. Uh, I think it translates through all the ages to everybody. There's something in it relatable. You can relate to one character, whether it is Romeo and Juliet, or whether it's Mercutio, who, or Tybalt when he dies. I think everybody can find something in this play. My wits faint. From English class to the theater, Shakespeare is alive and well at Earl Marriott Secondary. I'm Abby, signing up for Gen Y on the Express. Gen Y is brought to you by Options, Surrey Community Services Society. Gen Y is a Shaw TV Access segment, and so is our next feature from the Burnaby Village Museum. Today, we step inside Tommy Irvine's house to see what life was like for early pioneers. Welcome to Burnaby Village Museum. I'm Maureen, and I would like to show you Tommy Irvine's house. Please come in with me. He built this house in 1911 with the help of a friend, Bob Moore. He had everything he wanted in here, very, very comfortable. He was a bachelor, so as a consequence, you'll notice there's no curtains on the windows. Everything is very simple. But he had a wood-burning stove to give him his heat, as well as his hot water from the water reservoir. And in the morning, he would get up, put his water on to heat to have his wash, and then he would shave. He used a shaving mug, which you'd put hot water in, and a special soap on the top that you'd get your lather from with a shaving brush to do your shaving in the morning. After he'd finish his shaving and dressing, he would go ahead and perhaps make his toast. His frying pan and kettle, everything that you needed to know, have to have your breakfast. So he really enjoyed his gramophone. So you'd wind it up, you'd take the break off, let the record speed up, and then you'd bring it down very, very carefully so as not to scratch your record. To get greater volume, you'd open these doors. You'll notice a pair of red long johns hanging there, and he wore those as a construction worker to keep himself warm. That white pot down there is called a chamber pot. Now that's what you would use at night if you had to go to the bathroom. If you weren't using that, then you went outside to the outhouse. So come on down to Burnaby Village Museum and visit us. We'd love to see you.
You can go to burnaby.ca to find out about upcoming events at the Burnaby Village Museum. And for other ideas on what's happening in your community, we've got today's Express Spotlight. The 2011 Vancouver International Dance Festival presents an outstanding and culturally diverse number of dance performances by artists from BC and around the world. Be part of the biggest intramural event in North America. Join 2,500 other UBC students as they swim, sprint, bike, run and climb over a 12-foot wall. Cherry Scouts observe and report what's in bloom around the city. No experience is necessary. All you need is a camera and a little curiosity. That's it for today's Express from False Creek. We're going to leave you with a look at the Remarkable Women 2011 project, and we'll see you next time.